Hey, what's up my fellow intellectuals? Welcome back to my channel. Sorry that I'm whispering. I think my roommate is still asleep. He just came back from a long trip, even though it is currently 12.04 in the afternoon. Uh, it's Sunday, uh, September 1st, Labor Day weekend, and I thought it'd be a good idea for me to show you what a day in my life is like, because I actually was planning on going to school today. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, it's Sunday, why are you going to school on Sunday? Well, long story short, next week I'm moving out of this place and I'm going to a different place down the street, and I have to give a presentation for this meeting for my research group, and then I also have to write a proposal that's due in exactly a week for a, a um, interferometry radio astronomy school that's going to be in Hawaii in January. So. I have a lot of things on my plate next week. I think I need to mitigate some of this damage by just going in to the office, working a little bit today. Not too much, as you can see, it's already noon, but I'm hoping to put in a few hours today at work, and I thought maybe it'll be a good time for you guys to see, you know, what is up with you know, my research, what I do, what my routine is sort of like, uh, but not on a weekend. I don't normally do this, but I thought that since there's not going to be a lot of people, and I don't have to worry about, you know, people not wanting to be on camera. Uh, at school, I thought it'd be a good day to try and show you what it's like. So, uh, hopefully, next time you see me, I'll be at school. So, see you there. Okay, so I just parked and I'm headed to my office now. As you can see, I'm at UC Irvine. Uh, that's a new building that's going to get constructed that has mostly been reserved for lab space. Uh, but and I don't even know how much lab space physics is going to get because I don't know. It seems like the chemistry department's gonna get all the space there from what I've heard. Um, but, like I said, I'm here to do some work. It's already like 12.30. I'm hoping to leave before, I don't know what's a reasonable goal, maybe five, six. I don't wanna to spend too much time. And by too much time, that's like four and a half to five hours, maybe like less than half a work day. Uh, but yeah, I just really need to get a lot of work done because next week is gonna be crazy. I'm moving. I have a teleconference meeting that day well, on the same day that I'm moving and that's not going to be fun. So sometimes you just got to do this when you are pressed for time and sometimes you just got to sacrifice a weekend day here and there to, to stay on track and not feel overwhelmed. That's sort of how I deal with a lot of work coming my way is that I'll probably sacrifice one of my weekend days even though I don't normally do that because I, I like to keep my weekends usually free and work free and so I can just have relaxation time but it is Labor Day weekend this weekend so Monday we also have off and I guess I could also just take tomorrow off if I really wanted to though again I'll probably work somewhere between a half day to three quarters of a full work day just to mitigate some of the damage because you know I also have an appointment Tuesday and then that's going to eat up a lot of my day as well and then I have until Thursday, so I don't really want to wait till Tuesday afternoon to start everything. I think that's one of the main things being in graduate school you have to master is just time management and knowing that yes, it kind of sucks to give up a weekend day, but if it's to spare yourself a ton of stress three or four days from now, you should totally do it. And I need to unlock this door because it is locked. Okay, so I am right by my office. I'm about to open the door. And I'll show you a little bit of the office once I get this door open. So I gotta get the key. Uh, here we go. And welcome to my domain. So welcome to my desk where I have a nice uh, Mac, iMac computer that my professor was so kind to donate me. I have papers, I have the markers for the whiteboard over there. I got this old computer that my professor uh, has yet to decide what to do with, and I have these two hard drives. This is my personal one, this is another one that my advisor bought me. So all my research is conducted on this iMac, which is really nice, it's really fast, and I have a cup for coffee or tea whenever the time permits. So if you look here, I've brought all of my books from my apartment, and they're now in my office, so I can have a nice place to just store my books, and hopefully they'll get a lot of use now, now that they're actually in a place where I do academic things. And I am currently running model optimized. Oh my gosh, that does not look good. Uh, already stuff is going wrong, as I can see here. That is, that's not good. Uh, I'm a little bit sad seeing that. That's actually a genuine reaction. I was not expecting to see the, the progress being 
uh, this is bad. But nonetheless, I've been writing this program for the past couple of months, and uh, I'm currently running, wow, 6.93 chi-squared memorization. Oh, that's not what I wanted to see. It was like at 1.38 the other day. Now it's completely stepping off in the wrong direction. So this is, this is, this is not good. Um, I might need to fix this. Check out this cool feature of this desk. It can go up and down. I should get this chair out of the way. But I'm going to sit down today. So I'm not going to stand. I'm going to sit down. And then I will tell you guys more about this proposal that I have to write. So I know I just said that I had to do a proposal, but I also forgot that this school also wants us to make a two paragraph summary as to why we want to come to the workshop. And so I just have been spending the past hour or so writing two paragraph explanation as to what you know why I want to go there and my reasoning is that I work mainly with ALMA so ALMA stands for the Anacoma Large Millimeter Array so here's like a little uh, primer book on ALMA that I have and now our group at UC Irvine has not always worked with radio astronomy data it only really recently was with the advent of ALMA you know, several years ago I think in 2013 that our group shifted over to start doing uh, science with radio data. But my advisor is not a traditional radio astronomer. He is trained as an optical, mainly mainly optical. He did a lot of optical observations of, uh, of quasars and other active galaxies. But mainly, my point is, I'm working with radio data. I don't come from a group that really specializes in this stuff, nor do I come from a school at UC Irvine where there's really anyone at the moment who primarily does radio astronomy. I might be forgetting someone, there might be a few people, but there's no really any class essentially that's just purely on radio astronomy. So for myself, I've had to bolster my own understanding of radio astronomy by going outside to workshops hosted by like the National Radio Astronomy Observatory where they've had people from, from ALMA essentially. So as you can see the back here, you have uh, NRAO, who I've just mentioned, and then you also have ALMA here. and I've gone to a workshop where they kind of taught us how to reduce ALMA data, and that was in March. Also went to a, uh, what is known as an ALMA community day, where they have someone from ALMA come out to a university or some public place, usually a university, and they'll teach you how to use the software that they have to reduce ALMA data. So I went to one that was in Berkeley uh, in January. So I've gone out of my way to learn a lot of radio astronomy, and this is another good opportunity for me to do just that. And so I've been arguing, look, I'm using radio data from ALMA, it'd be great to learn more about the theory of uh, interferometry. And also I've been talking about my goals during my PhD thesis. Some of my goals include uh, working with the data, the raw data, the uh, original form that it's in. So when we look at you know targets with ALMA, as you can see here, it's, a, uh, it's an interferometry dish. Essentially what happens is that it's not actually taking pictures of the sky plane, the sky plane being the actual plane of the sky, what it's doing is it's measuring what is known as the Fourier transform of that. So that's a really fancy word. Fourier transforms are a pretty complicated topic. So, you know, if you need a refresher, look just, you know, briefly look up Fourier transforms. But essentially we're looking at what is known as the Fourier transform of the image on the sky. And so when you have the raw data in that Fourier transform state, you have to do what an inverse Fourier transform to get to this picture. So uh, that plane, that Fourier transform plane that the original data is in, it's called what is known as the UV plane. And now the UV plane, like I said, is where the original observations from the radio array happen. And the problem, and not really the problem, but sort of like the limitation with a a radio interferometer is, notice here that in radio interferometry you have these multiple uh, antenna that cover the sky, but there is some finite distance between you know any two antenna, and there's also a maximum baseline difference between any two uh, antenna. So the, the you know, perfect resolution of uh, interferometer, that's pretty much set by how far your two, uh, your, your farthest baseline between any two antenna. But the thing is, because you don't have, in theory, you don't have a huge diameter telescope, radio telescope, you just have a bunch of smaller uh, radio telescopes that are you know, spaced out. The thing is, you don't get 
perfect coverage in the UV plane. And what does that mean? Uh, I essentially have a model here that I've generated from the submillimeter array uh, uh, website, sorry. And I'll show you what I mean. So let me just trim this around here. And um, okay, so what is this? So this is a model simulation essentially of a radio observation. I've set the on source time here for two hours. So this is sampling with eight uh, antenna for the, from the submillimeter array for two hours. And this sort of gives you the UV plane coverage. So as you can see here, this says U, this says V, this is the Fourier transformed plane of the sky. And all this blue here is just telling you what points in the UV plane are sampled. And so the problem is, as you can see, or as you can, you know, you can see right there, is, let me put the camera back down here. All right, so essentially the problem is that you don't have perfect coverage on the UV plane. You have discrete points that are sampled, and so there's not a perfect one-to-one -one correspondence, if you want to think about it in a mathematical way. There's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, a four, uh, the, you know, the points in the UV plane and the points in the image plane. Uh, and that pretty much sums up my knowledge of radio interferometry right there, so I hope it wasn't too confusing, but that's essentially what you know any of these interferometers, radio interferometers, do. They take the Fourier transform, they sample at, or they take the Fourier transform of the image on the sky, they have to sample at discrete points, then you have to inverse Fourier transform that back, even though that's not a perfect one-to-one -one correspondence, and then you have to do a lot of um, what is known as deconvolution and cleaning of your image, which is getting really complicated now. So I've spent a long time talking about this. Um, Hope it wasn't too boring. Hope you learned a little bit about radio interferometry and what I have to deal with on an almost day-to-day -day basis and when I think about this stuff. So I still haven't written the proposal yet. Had my reasons. Hopefully they'll buy it and they'll, and I mean not buy it, I'm being genuine. I'm saying like this is why I want to go, but you know what I'm saying? I hope they'll think it's a good enough reason for me to go and I'll get to go. So back to the proposal writing. Okay. So it is close to six o'clock right now. It's like 5.55 p.m. and I'm getting a bit hungry. And even though I'm not done with the scientific proposal yet, I think I've done a good amount of work on it. I've done maybe like two thirds of it. So I've done a decent amount of work and I think it is okay for me to go home and just relax for the rest of the day. And I think I'll be back tomorrow to finish some other stuff up and prepare for more uh, work to be done for the rest of the week. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this weird weekend day in my life video that is not a typical uh, weekend day for me, but nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more videos like this where I go around talking about my research, where I sort of show what the research process is like and just show me working, uh, I don't really know how that will work because there's going to be people in this office and I don't really want to put them on camera if they don't want to be. But if you want to see videos just like this where I, you know, talk about research and science, then please leave a like and a comment and consider subscribing if you want to see more stuff like this. So I will see you guys next time.